Hello. Welcome to week three, video three. Just doing um, an easy double today. I was planning on doing a session today, it's Wednesday, and uh, I still have a bit of the keeper hill race on my legs, so I'm not going to push it too hard, but I'll still do 15 or 16 miles today anyway. So that'll be my session. It's going to be a nice week in terms of miles. If I start from Sunday, I'll have, should have about close to 50 done today. Some nice views today. Yeah, just up around Sleep Feeling Mountains. So I like to, so I like to do a lot of my easy runs. And in terms of mileage and sticking to the 80-20 principle, I usually try to do it. But there's times there when I'm, I'm doing small miles in work and uh, I really have to do a big session when I'm off. So there's times when it might be 50-50, <laughs> but it's just the way it is. But in terms of developing your aerobic engine and if you're wondering why, why people do all these big miles, didn't have to like Kipchoge or Farah, sometimes you could do 140 miles a week. And it's these um, easy miles where they get all this um, adaptations in the muscles, capillary, mitochondrial density and they are all things that make you a more efficient runner and um, definitely beneficial to get lots of big base miles when you're starting your marathon because the bigger your aerobic engine you know, the more potential you have and it also pushes up your other zones. So the more economic slash faster you can run easy, the easier your marathon's gonna be. Quite simple, really. <sighs> Lovely day today. Listening to the sounds of nature. Shift does a lot of bad things to your body. But you know, being able to run up here on a midweek if your children are at school or whatnot, probably do any benefit. <sighs> so, nice, nice smile this week. Tomorrow, like I said, I'll already set my watch, see what kind of zone this gives me, or VO2 max even. I still know what I have to do anyway, you know, but I'm going to know by the next couple of weeks what I'm able to do by looking over my data, you know. That's one of the good things about having done the time already. You know, gives you a little bit of confidence probably overconfidence to be honest because I know I definitely said hard at the last time but uh, I give it a shot anyway, why not? I got that to lose and um, I guess I'll touch base tomorrow I did 40 minutes threshold last week just a bit faster than marathon pace just stay in the zone this week I might add 10 minutes on every other week to build it up and the same will go for my uh, faster kind of like the threshold runs the two minutes on, one minute on, all that stuff I'm going to build that up as well I'm still going to tip away in the hills for the next few weeks anyway and I might even do a session up in Keeper or my Lusta and uh, I'll see you tomorrow, that was uh, Wednesday Therefore, if we come from Sunday, you know, you can reset your watch and the Garmin app allows you to pick the day 
your your week starts from and where my shift works starting from Sunday or even a Saturday is better for me um, so that's what I did so I'll see you tomorrow Not bad considering there's about five or six hundred miles on these old Nike Zoom tempos. Um, I put a link up there a couple of weeks ago on the Limerick Running page. Um, about 50% off the tempos. And obviously I invested in a pair. So it's time to, time to test them out now. And break them in the hard way, which is straight into a marathon pace run. Oh yeah. Here's to another 500 miles. Two point six miles done. Warm up. Now straight to business. I'm gonna do eight miles at Martin Pace just to see where the heart rate's at. And uh, it's probably gonna be about I don't know 52 minutes, something like that. I did 42 last uh, two weeks ago, and um, every every other week I'll probably do a bit of this just to get used to it. Like you know, till I find till I do the final 16 at Martin Pace. So obviously getting lots of these Martin Pace runs in. It's gonna make that feel easier and obviously get Marie for that marathon at 2.29. So I'm hoping to run around 5.39 per mile today. It's just, just slightly faster, that's about 2.28 high pace. Um, I'm just gonna watch the heart rate. If I see the heart rate uh, creeping up a bit too high, I'll obviously just slow the pace down because there's plenty of time for going faster. And now in this kind of base phase, just all about getting in some quality sessions without overdoing it till the hard stuff starts coming in like so I suppose I'll do a little stretch there when we get ready okay. ready steady How are you 
you feeling? Not too bad. Are you on the water? No. Car rate 1, 156, 10k, 35 minutes back on. Not too bad. Still have a bit of the mountain in the legs from Sunday, but it feels good to be running on flat again, you know. Uh, two miles to go. We can go over the, the zone. Exactly where I want to be. Hey. Hey. 52 minutes. 9.2 miles. 5.39 a mile. My Garmin tells me 69 VO2 max, so we'll see what that is like next week. I'm going up to Dublin to do the, the official VO2 max test. 9.2 miles of marathon pace. Um, Last week I did um, 42 minutes, this week 52. So I'll try to build on that now for the next couple of weeks. And um, hopefully I'll get to 16 in good shape. <laughs> Cheers. 9.2 miles at Martin Pest done. The heart rate was exactly where I wanted it to be. The heart rate was about 155 beats per minute, which is well under the 160 that I normally use as a guide. So I'm very happy with that. There was a bit of glitch for the last two miles in the heart rate, like, but I knew I was kind of comfortable enough anyway, so I didn't really take notice of it. Uh, sometimes if your heart rate spikes up like that exponentially, you know, it's just, it's obviously a glitch, like, so there are things you get used to. You, you know, you know how you're feeling, you know your body, like, but in terms of that workout now, it was brilliant, like, really happy with it. Um, I'll probably add another, you know, a couple of minutes on that the next time we do it and I'll keep building it up now for the next couple of weeks. But they're the kind of sessions that are going to give me confidence, like, because I always think that you should be able to go out and do Martin Pass, you know, at the drop of a hat, like, you, you should be comfortable at doing it, especially if you want to run 26.2 miles at that pace. So, whether it's in work or whether it's, um, I'm doing a long run here, I always factor in Martin Pass runs to see where I'm at. And um, they're the things that are going to give me confidence down the line. Definitely enjoyed that session today. I love running at Martin Pass. Um, when I finished the session, then my VO2 max came in at 69. It's been hovering around 67 to 69 for the last couple of uh, years anyway. But um, I'm going up to Dublin next week to get a VO2 max test. I never got one before, so it's going to be my first official one. And um, it'll be interesting to see what kind of data I get back from that. Um, that's going to give me the proper zones to train in. Like, and maybe down the line I might do the lactate one as well and just see how they compare with the Garmin like I put a lot of faith in my Garmin and it, it works for me so I'm not too bothered about the real scientific the aspect of it I think the main thing is with your training it's just getting out there um, being comfortable and confident that you can run marathon pace and you know just hopefully everything goes well on the day so that's um, week 3 now and that's a nice week I have a couple of days left um, from from Sunday to Saturday this week, I'll definitely have 80 miles done. I have 70 done already from Sunday, so I just need to add in a couple more, and I'll have a nice solid week done with um, 52 minutes at marathon pace. And if I can stay in the zone there like that again, it's definitely going to give me a lot of confidence. Like um, I still felt a bit of the the, the mountain rest in the legs, like, but 
it actually feels so nice to be running on kind of flat. It was a bit kind of rolling hill today, like, but you know, we call it flat, like, compared to what, what uh, Keeper Hill was on Sunday and what I lost had a week before. So when you start coming back to the roads, you really kind of feel that strength you get from the hills. And that's something that I like doing when I come off the hills to go and do road races and stuff. You know, that, that uh, strength you build up definitely stands you. Like, if you can come off the hills there and not have any niggles or injuries, and use all that strength in your base, like, it's definitely going to help you run faster down the line, you know. So, I'll probably do a couple of strides maybe at the, at the weekend and just try to get some little bit of speed back in the legs, just to, you know, just to loosen them out a bit. And then next week, the VO2 max test. So, I, I probably won't be able to do a session um, before that, because I'll be working nights um, all weekend and stuff, and it's going to take a lot out of me. Like, I just want to get out, get these nights out of the way. I have three more shifts to do till the end of the month, and then I'll have my holidays. Like, and then I'll worry about the really big stuff there. But um, maybe next Thursday I'll do my next big session, unless um, I do something after the VO2, VO2 max test in Dublin. So I'll touch base with you again next week. So that was um, a nice, uh, solid uh, session. 9.2 miles at Martin Pest, 5.39 a mile. Heart rate was perfect. Delighted with that. And um, I'll talk to you next week. Bye.